Welcome back. This morning, an important discussion on communication, how to help widows in the face of loss is a challenge to those who love and long to comfort someone. Most folks have no idea how to approach the topic of an untimely death. The U.S. Census Bureau counted 14.3 million Americans as widowed in 2010 with a vast majority women. There's a tendency to picture widowhood as a consequence of old age. Yet about one third of widows lose their spouse before the age of 45. Gwen Peterson is the president of Hope for Widows Foundation. Started that foundation after a friend of yours lost her husband at a very early age. Tell us about yes. your program. Well, our foundation supports any woman of any age in all of the United States. And we started because Michelle's husband died um, in 2006 during the St. George Triathlon and died of a cardiac arrhythmia and she was pregnant with five children mm. and it was traumatic and I was the best friend there just helping her live life but she had this amazing miracle happen for her where two widows came through her line at the viewing and said you don't know us but we've lost our husbands too and we're gonna support you and I was there every day helping keep her alive but right. guess what those women did for her what I couldn't understand. I had not walked the shoes of my husband dying right. and they helped her emotionally work through. And so a couple years ago, we just decided it was time for someone to support all the widows out there that are just grieving alone. So in your writings and in your discussion with folks, how do we talk to a widow so that she knows we care and that we're there for her without, you know, saying something foolish. Well, actually, we just had a, our, um, an amazing organization called Sawaya Consulting, who is a national consulting firm, take us under their wing and create this fantastic website where we have a secure area for widows that they can go in and work with one another. But we have on our outside area for the public um, to look at an area on how to support a widowed woman. And there are multiple articles about what to say and what not to say. And from our point of view, widows are always saying at the week of moment of impact, everyone says, oh, we'll be there for you. Sure. Please let us help you. And guess what? The, the funeral's over and people stop coming. Well, that's because we don't know what to do. We don't. So if my neighbor passes away, mm -hmm. uh, her husband, for example, what do I say? Um, well, what you're going to say is, we are so sorry, and we will be here from you for you. And then after that, guess what? You have to be, be there. there for her. So you just go. She does not know what she needs. She's not even thinking clearly normally for the first year. So at that point, you're going to go say, you know what? You call her while you're at the grocery store. I'm at the grocery store. Would you like some milk, eggs, and bread? or just bring them over or go to her house and if you see a repair that needs to be made, just do it for her because she's not really able to tell you what she needs. So just if it was your wife that died, what would you want people to do for her? That's what you do for your widowed neighbor. Another common mistake we make in a culture where a lot of people believe in eternal life mm -hmm. and that families will be together after this, that uh, for some reason, uh, we might not think of the, the shock of the moment as part of the big picture of, hey, well, look, you'll be back with him soon and he won't be sick when you see him. So, right. man up. <laughs> yes, yes. So we make that mistake. We don't say man up, hopefully. <laughs> yes. But there's that concept around, and how do we get around that? Well, we hear a lot from um, people who are in religions that do believe that they right. will be seeing people in the afterlife that, you know, at least there's a plan and you'll get to see him later. Well, guess what? you do not want to be without him right now. And telling, him, telling that widow, oh, well, you'll get to see him later, is not normally a comfort at all. So really, don't even discuss that because they are angry that they are living day to day without him. And this should not have been their future. Is that how they believe? And so I tell people just don't even go there, even if that's your belief and hers, because right now she's not ready to hear it. All right, Hope for Widows Foundation, where can folks go to find um, it? Our website is strictly hope, hopeforwidows.org, and it's not the letter F, it's F-O-R, not the number four. And on there, there is an outside wall, like you asked mm -hmm. about resources for people to support widows. Then there is a secure area. So if your neighbor does pass away, we have an area where you can put her email and her information, and then we'll get the request to add her to our secure area so she can get to our peer-to-peer -peer support so she knows she's not alone right. because she probably won't have what happened to Michelle, a woman at the moment of impact. And um, speaking of that, our, our next push for fundraising 
fundraising is we are working on new widow kits that will go into the mortuary so when the woman's sitting there she gets a packet with a journal because we know grieving people need to be journaling and then we will be putting our foundation information so at the moment of impact she may not look at it that week mm -hmm. but when everybody goes away the following week she's going to remember that there was some widow group that gave her a packet right. and it had the information and so we're raising funds for those journals right now. It's a great idea because mm -hmm. we need that help. Gwen, <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. Congratulations on your efforts. Thank you. You can read much more about how to reach out to widows and the Hope for Widows Foundation in Lois Collins' outstanding article at national.deseretnews.com. The months after a new baby is born can be isolating for moms. They're torn between spending valuable time with their babies, getting back in shape, and interacting with other adults. Deanie Wimmer looks at a new and unique class that encourages moms to bring their new babies along. To at any point you can take your hand off the bar, just a little test of the balance. They're raising the Pulling bar and knees, balancing a love of motherhood and ballet. We come up through first. At this new class where nice moms dance while arms. wearing their babies. We, oh, I'm a dancer and I really need to dance. And then I became a new mom and I really needed to be close to my baby. So for me, it really quickly became a, necess a necessity to and marry those two <laughs> vital parts of my life. Toe while heel flex, really pulling up those abdominals to the back. So Instructor Rosie Goodman hips. Tennant is a professional dancer and, and teacher. Stretch. She expected other other dancers to take on the challenging class, but the response from women with little to no dance experience has been overwhelming. I saw it on Facebook and I thought it'd be a great way to meet other moms and babies and get out of the house for a little bit. I was really surprised there were 200 Facebook likes in a week and people I'd never met before, so I think it spoke to the need for moms to get out and do something that's expressive and creative. Moms are also expressing their surprise at how quickly they feel the burn of a ballet workout. I didn't think it would be a very intense workout, but after the first class, I was sweating. The next three days, my muscles were aching. And two, and we stretch. We're pulling up the knees, and three. And all the while, the abdominals are pulling in, so we're supporting that baby's weight. These dancers are also the supporting their baby's physical, and emotional, and long. developmental growth. They're comforted by it. I think it feels familiar. And most of them you'll see fall asleep or are kind of quiet and alert. It's used to the bouncing and the music, and she loves it. If you notice, she fell right asleep. It's, it's calming to her. And... One, two. Three. Pediatricians say there's no question that babies find dancing relaxing. It's just such a nice way to have the baby feel close to you, feel your heartbeat, feel your warmth, and she loves it. Cuddled up with you, so it's all the benefits of baby wearing plus exercise. The baby wearing movement is sweeping the country, and the technology to support it is advancing quickly. Then two and one. Rosie Just expects her classes, before. hosted by Performance Dance Center, to expand right along with the new mom's interest in baby wearing and with their old fashioned desire to get back in shape and dance. I always wanted to be a ballerina. Every girl wants to be a ballerina, so I thought this was a great way to not feel intimidated by ballet class and get to learn it finally. And melt and stretch. We're going to close. Interesting, that's Deanie Wimmer reporting. The ballet with baby classes are catching on in Los Angeles and Salt Lake City. Next, SPF, UVA, UVB. What does it all mean? We'll show you how to sort through all the sunscreen labeled jargon and find the best protection for your skin.